Let's just go ahead. Hey guys, it's Kristen. It's Sunday. We're watching our Pagan Opinions. I'm outside to show you guys my mom's beautiful backyard. It's windy and cold and I have wet hair, so I'm going to hurry. First of all, have you guys ever tried this? Cascade Ice. This is a pomegranate berry. It's really good. Um, it's just about like bringing that up. Anyways, this week on OPO, we've been talking about childhood religion, what religions we were raised, and what kind of, what we did and didn't like, I think, about the religion. So bear with me. I've actually told you guys this at least once, probably twice, but we'll go ahead and talk anyways. So my parents raised me to be non-denominational. I never went to church. Um, I never really, sorry, ugh. Um, I never really had a set religion until we moved in with my grandparents for, uh, I think, like six months to a year. And um, we moved in because we had just moved to Oregon. We had just gotten here. We were um, trying to get a house. And we just didn't get there yet until we got this house, which we've been in since I was in fourth grade. So it's crazy. Anyways, third grade. I think I was in, I don't know. It doesn't matter. My point is. Um, but while we were there, my grandmother is really prominent in the Catholic Church. And so we would always go to church every Sunday to get all of us kids up. And, you know, it was just kind of what we did. Um, I've always had this reverence with churches. I love churches. I don't even care what kind of a church it is. I love being inside of a church. I always get that aha moment, that feeling of just a united purpose, a united belief. And it doesn't have to be my belief, but I just think that it is so awe-inspiring to be inside of a church. I have, um, excuse me while I hiccup, had the pleasure to be in plenty of churches of all different sorts of religions, thank goodness, um, due to the fact that I uh, sing and so I, I sing a lot in churches especially when I was younger I would sing a lot in churches because churches have amazing acoustics so we were always in different kinds of churches and you know that church that she goes to is still that cute little church my little childhood church and um, we were, like I said she was very prominent we always came early to Sunday service mass I think is what they call it Catholic mass mass I don't know um, anyways when I got older when I was you know, when we moved into here the next year, I was really prominent on keeping myself up to date with the faith. And so, you know, I asked for, you know, a teen Bible when I got, you know, old enough to be like a teen. Like a little travel Bible that I would look at and read and take notes. I went to um, little church groups and things like that. I never went to Sunday school. Um, I was always with my family and never went to Sunday school. I just never had like an interest to get that deep into it. But, um, always went to church, always went to all of that. So when I got older and we moved here, I kind of put Catholicism to the wayside, picked up Christianity, which I guess is technically, like I'm not even going into the difference between Catholicism and Christianity. All I'm saying is I had a friend, a really great friend of mine who was my very best friend when I first moved here. She was one of the first people I had ever met and um, in, in the town that I live in right now. And she was Christian. And so I would go to her youth group all the time was always with her her mom every Wednesday I think after school had um, etiquette class is what we like to call it so we learned it's her it was her version of youth group she would teach us etiquette so like I learned how to sew a bag that I'm sure I still have somewhere I learned how to set a table right you know you know knife facing in towards the person instead of out because that means you want harm for the person next to them or whatever Learned all of that. Learned how to butter bread, right, and all kinds of all kinds of jazz in fourth grade. Fourth grade, <laughs> and um, learned my my lesson from the Bible for the day, and then we got to go outside and play the Saddle Club. Which, if you guys have ever seen that show, I loved that show. I was obsessed with that show as a kid. Anyways, um, so I moved on from my family's teachings to my friends' teachings, and when I got into middle school and high school, met my best friend, still best friend Heather. Um, I went to youth group with her for a few times and we just couldn't get into it. And the thing that I really loved about, love about religion in general is that sense of unity, that sense of, of peace and calm that comes over you when you walk into a church and you know that everyone's there for the same purpose. When at the end of sermon, everyone would ask for prayers for their families, for their friends, for whoever, because regardless of whether or not they were willing to ask for it, they needed them. And that was something that everyone was was totally willing to do was give out a moment of their time for other people and I thought that was so cool. The problem I've always had with any kind of religion that um, accepts it is proselytizing which is just I think that's the word I can't talk today 
which is them, you know, coming forward and telling them, telling you that you're damned. Like I never understood calling somebody else damned, saying that they needed to absolve their sins or else the father wasn't going to take them or whatever. And I never understood that. Why, why somebody who was supposed to be so loving and so kind to people, to the people he, he brought onto this earth and he, he risked or gave, I should say his life to save is willing to condemn them for, for sins. I just didn't understand why that was possible, why having a human experience, regardless of your age and regardless of anything like that, sorry, um, was enough to get you sent to hell. I never understood it. And so that was something that definitely turned me off from the church because I just didn't get why you couldn't just be yourself, regardless of who that was, and just automatically go to, go to heaven. You had to work for it. And I, I understand that everything comes with work, but with something like religion, it's just this inner peace, this the sanctity that you have, that you are a good person. And I just never understood how you can make mistakes that are simple mistakes that everybody makes and not be able to get into heaven, that you can't be who the Father wanted you to be or who He created you to be and not get into heaven. You know what I mean? Like, I just never understood that. And as I got older, it definitely kept me away for that reason when... Um, even now and talking to my grandmother, I have the hardest time when anybody, any like homosexual comments come up. I have the hardest time just, just explaining myself to some, to, to the point where she'll actually listen to me. I never understood how this all being this big person in the sky, this God who creates us and who has died for us and who her son died. I don't, don't quote me on any of this. My point is, this person who loves us so unconditionally and who creates us in, 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 in his image could possibly condemn someone for loving who they love. Never understood it. Who could possibly send them to hell for someone that they love. I didn't get it. And even the story... Oh gosh, I haven't thought about this story in a really long time. And I would never understood why he condemned Lucifer either. Because if you think about it, and I get it, I totally get it too, but like, at the same time, he loved his father as much as he was supposed to love it. He wasn't, he was just selfish. That was what he was. Lucifer was selfish. He wanted his father to himself and to his brothers, and, and he wasn't willing to share. And that's everybody, for the most part. People say that we aren't selfish, but in some ways, everybody's selfish. We try hard not to be, but in some ways, everybody has a, a pinch of selfishness in them. I never understood why he got contempt six feet under. Like, I just don't understand. It doesn't matter. I'm not. I don't believe in it. But there are just so many things that I loved and disliked about how I grew up. I don't know. I'm I'm not going to edit this video. I'm sure that I've gone off topic. My point is, is that I was raised in the Catholic and Christian faith. And I turned to Wicca and paganism much later, which... Y'all can look at the coming out story, I guess, that we all did if you wanted to learn more about that. Holy frick, I'm cold. Okay, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to go inside and drink my, my thing and get warm. So, you guys have a great week. Um, uh, it's this week or next week is our end of season one. Yay! So, keep track on uh, facebook.com slash opinions for when season two starts and when we need substitute auditions because those are coming up as well. If you have any requests, please go ahead and email us here um, on YouTube, on YouTube, or you can go ahead and email us or message us on Facebook, on the public Facebook. We all have access to those messages, so there you go. If you have any specific questions for specific people, you can either go to their specific YouTube pages or you can go to their Facebooks if we've got them, or you can go to the Harping and Opinions and put their names down. It doesn't really matter. Just keep in touch with us while we're gone. And I will see you guys next week, maybe. Like I said, I honestly don't remember what week this is, so I'm really sorry. But tell me below whether or not um, what your personal childhood religion was and whether or not you still practice and what, how, how it affected your spirituality when you were raised, you know, when you, when you got older, when you growed. Okay, I'm going to go now. I think I'm going crazy. So bye. Stay warm.